Nothing can hinder. Nurturing every learner. Together we soar. Make dreams score. Amidst the challenges we face, a journey of learning wins the race. Education for all. Let's rise, not fall. This is the Ed Science Ed TV. A video lesson of Wanjimakar Ed National High School. School Division of Pangasinan 2. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us another day to study and prepare for a good life in the future. Thank you for giving us the chance to continue learning amidst the pandemic which caused a lot of changes in our lives. Bless our parents who work hard to support us. Bless our teachers who are doing their best to inspire and guide us especially in these trying times. Bless our country and the people who continue fighting to stop the pandemic. Lord, fill us with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give us good memory so that we might understand and remember what we are going to study now. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello, dear students. Welcome to Saya TV. This is Teacher Jalo, your virtual science teacher. Be excited as we learn a new knowledge in the world of science. Today's video lesson, we will learn the identity of a substance according to its atomic structure. This video lesson will help you determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in a particular atom. Let's begin our third quarter, Module 3 by learning about our most essential learning competencies which you should master by the end of this week. In our previous lesson, we discussed the different processes in the changes of matter. Do you still remember those processes? We have melting, freezing, evaporation, sublimation, condensation, and of course, we have deposition. Alright, let's begin our lesson by answering the following scrabbled words. Arrange the following letters to form a word. Number 1. It is a tabular display of the chemical elements which are arranged by atomic number, electron configuration, and recurring chemical properties. This is periodic table. Very good. In physical sciences, these are smaller than atoms. They can be composite particles such as the neutron, proton, and electron. The scrabbled words is subatomic particles. It is the physical property of matter that causes it to experience a force when placed in an electromagnetic field. The scrabbled word is charges. Let's move on to our lesson. You have discovered that matter is made up of indivisible atoms, and there are no parts of it. However, our scientists discovered that an atom is made up of even smaller particles. According to modern research, there are 36 subatomic particles inside of an atom. But in this level, we do not study all these 36, but rather, we'll focus on the three subatomic particles. Are you familiar with the three subatomic particles? We have proton, electron, and neutron. Proton is the positively charged particles in an atom, while electron is the negatively charged particles inside of an atom, while neutron is the neutral charge of an atom. The easy way to remember the subatomic particles of an atom is to remember pen. P stands for proton, E stands for electron, and N stands for neutron. Atoms are best described through different atomic models. After a series of experiments and observations, models have revealed the composition of an atom. After Dalton's atomic theory, more scientists became interested in the discovery and development of new methods and equipments that could further prove the nature of matter. 
the scientists were able to confirm the existence of subatomic particles. In 1897, Sir Joseph John Thomson led to the discovery of the electron using the cathode ray experiment. He revised the atomic theory and proposed the raisin bread atomic model. According to Sir Joseph John Thomson, an atom is positively charged sphere with loosely embedded electrons. This is somehow similar to a bread with embedded raisins. And it was later on called the plum pudding model. Well, in 1910, Ernest Rutherford, together with Giger in Marsden, carried out his famous experiment using helium nuclei in a sheet of a gold foil. They found that most of the helium nuclei passed through the foil. A small number were deflected and some helium nuclei bounced straight back. Rutherford's new evidence allowed him to propose more detailed model with a central nucleus. He suggested that the positive charge was all in a central nucleus, with this holding the electrons in place by electrical attraction. However, this was not the end of the story until Niels Bohr put an interest to refine Rather's Ford idea by adding that electrons were in orbit, like planets orbiting the sun. Niels Bohr proposed a model of the atom in which the electron was able to occupy only certain orbits around the nucleus. This idea was later called the Niels Bohr model or the planetary model. His model was not completely correct, but it has many features that are approximately correct and sufficient, especially in the theory of the atom in its called quantum mechanics. Niels Bohr model is approximation to quantum mechanics that has the virtue of being much simpler. As time goes by, in 1926, a name Erwin Schrodinger discovered that electrons move around the nucleus in a cloud, not orbits. Orbital help us predict that area where we can find electrons. The closer position to the nucleus, the higher the chance to find electrons. The structure of an atom contains three main areas. The nucleus, which are the central part of an atom, the shells or the energy levels around the nucleus, and the 99.99% .99 empty space of an atom. In relation to the subatomic particles of an atom, let's discuss the atomic number and atomic mass of each element in the periodic table. In the periodic table, to be able to identify this atomic number and atomic mass, we should use the periodic table of elements. When it comes to using the periodic table of elements, the atomic number is normally on the leftmost part while the atomic mass is either on the right topmost part or below the element symbol and name depending on the periodic table that you are using. For example, the atomic number of element helium is 2 and the atomic mass is 4. Same with the element carbon, the atomic number is 6 and the atomic mass is 12. So what is atomic number and atomic mass? Atomic number is the number of protons in an atom, while atomic mass is the number of protons and neutrons in an atom. Let's try this one. You can open your periodic table to answer the following questions by stating true if the statement is correct and false if it's not. Are you ready? All right. Let's begin. The atomic number of chlorine is 17. You can post the video for you to check your periodic table and find the atomic number of element chlorine. Now, what is your answer? The answer is true. The atomic number of chlorine is 17. Very good. The atomic mass of calcium is 20. You can post the video for you to check your periodic table and look for the atomic mass of element calcium. Now, what is your answer? The answer is false because the atomic mass of element calcium is 40. Very good! Now, let us study how to determine and figure out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons on each element. 
To calculate the numbers of subatomic particles, the atomic number and atomic mass are very important to determine the numbers of the subatomic particles in an atom. As I mentioned a while ago, the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. An atomic mass is the total number of protons and neutrons. So how do we get the number of proton? The number of proton is the same with the atomic number. For example, the element sodium has the atomic number of 11. Therefore, the number of proton is 11. How about the number of electron? The number of electron is equal to the number of protons. If sodium has 11 protons, therefore, sodium has also 11 electrons. But how about the number of neutrons? The number of neutrons is equal to the difference between the mass number and the number of protons. In our example, sodium has 11 protons and atomic mass of 23. The difference between the two numbers is 12. To avoid confusion, let us have a recap using the given example. The atomic number of sodium is 11. The atomic mass is 22.990 or rounded off to 23. The number of proton is the same with the atomic number. The number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. Thus, sodium has 11 electrons. As I said, the number of neutron is equal to the difference between the mass number and the number of proton. Therefore, the number of neutron is 12. Determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons of the element titanium. The atomic number of the element titanium is 22. And the mass number is 47.88 or rounded to 48. The number of protons is 22. The number of electrons is also 22. What about the number of neutrons? What about the number of neutrons? As I said, the number of neutrons is equal to the difference between the mass number and the number of protons. Therefore, the number of neutrons is 26. For more example, I will be showing you more sets for you to determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Are you ready? Let's begin. Element magnesium has an atomic number of 12 and a mass number of 24. What are the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons of the element magnesium? You can post the video for you to check your answer. What do you think the answer? The number of protons is 12. The number of electrons is 12. And the number of neutrons is also 12. Did you get the correct answer? Very good! The atomic number of the element cobalt is 27. And the atomic mass is 59. Determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Again, you can post the video for you to think your answer. Now, what do you think the answer? The number of proton is 27. The number of electron is also 27. And the number of neutron is 32. Very good! Potassium has an atomic number of 19 and atomic mass of 39. Determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Again, you can post the video for you to think your answer. Now, what do you think the answer? The number of protons is 19. And for number of electrons is also 19. What about the number of neutrons? It is 20. Very good! We have come to the end of this learning episode. I hope you learned a lot from this video lesson. Thank you for staying with me. I am Teacher Jello, and together, let's learn science fun and easy. See you in our next learning episode. Be safe and stay at home. Bye!